Okay, I know uh, last year didn't necessarily end up exactly the way you wanted it to uh, results-wise. Was there any thought of taking some time away or, you know? No, not so, not whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I mean, when you, you have those big opportunities, those big names, those, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to win every fight. That's the sport, right? But was it difficult to process, I mean, kind of those setbacks at all? What setbacks? A broken hand and uh, getting raped by Chemayev? I don't think I care about either one of those. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, well, you got this one coming up. Uh, have we got the weight uh, nailed down yet? Have you, have you run into Santiago, see if he's up for... It's 170 pounds, but, you know, closed mouth don't get fed. And I was looking at some good food down the street, and I was like, fuck, that shit smells good. So figured I'd give it a shot. Shot didn't work, so fuck, it keeps cutting weight. <laughs> I know when everybody saw it, they were like, oh, I mean, is, it, is welterweight difficult for you at this point, or was it just having a little fun? Uh, welterweight is not difficult, not at all. I eat snacks the whole way leading up to fight week and shit like that. Probably can go a little lighter if I really wanted to, but I don't really want to. You know what I mean? I Honestly, preferably, I like 85. You know what I mean? Who the fuck wants to cut weight? You know what I mean? I want to smoke some weed and chill. That's just me, you know? But to each his own, right? <laughs> so, why do you, so why do you keep taking these 170 fights then? Uh, I took 170 fight. They realized I can make the weight class, and uh, now I'm locked in at 170. I guess I can't go back up, so be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about Santiago as an opponent. Obviously, the guy's been around for a long time, uh, top contender for a long time. What, what do you think he presents to you? Uh, he's a real tough guy, you know, and, um, but that, that's, you know, that's kind of where it is. It's kind of where it is. Tough guy, pretty good record. Uh, you look at his early fights before he got to the UFC, it was a lot of guys who were like 0-1, 3-2, 3-3. It's, you know, it's like just one of those things where some people do it. I think it's really smart for coaches to do it for fighters. I really think it's smart for organizations to build fighters up so they can make it to the big show and make a good check. But uh, me personally, it's not the way I get down. So props to the guy. You know, kudos to him. Tough guy. Morano was touching him up. I look to do the same. This would be a big win for you, right? I mean, you know, you had no, to No, not that. really. <laughs> so. Nah, Wonder Boy or Jemaya would have been a big win. Brunson or Vittori probably would have been a big win. They've been in the top 15 for how long? All these other wins are just good paychecks in the, in the bank, you know what I mean? And I don't get me twisted. I love the paycheck in the fucking bank. <laughs> well, that's what, I guess that's interesting because that's what I was going to ask you. Is like knowing your popularity, I think you can fight anybody in the division and people will tune in. So do you care about, like, rankings and making a charge to the top, or does that even matter to you? No, nah, it doesn't really matter. I guess it mattered for a while. I'm 30 now, so it's like really like, what's whatever, you know what I mean? It'd be nice to get ranked at 170, see how far I can get, and then go back to 85. But, you know, in this world that we're living in, I'll take whatever they give me, and whatever they give me is good enough because it's a whole lot of zeros going in my banking account, so it's kind of hard to complain. Nice. Last thing for me, I guess I kind of want to ask you what your goals were for this year. I know you like fighting frequently. I mean, is there a number of, of, of opponents, or what's, what's the goals this year? Three to four, three to four wins this year, and uh, I don't really care about the rankings and stuff like that, but it'd be nice to have a number next to my name so that when people ask, like, you know, I can be like, oh, yeah, I'm like 15 or some shit like that. You know what I mean? It's just pretty cool to say. Yeah. Kevin, right here. Uh, you said just, just right now that you don't really care about, like, rankings, title runs and everything, um, but you did in the past. Was there a moment that it just kind of flipped? When, when did I didn't pass? Because you guys heard me say I took some shrooms, and <laughs> that's what the shrooms said. I just told you what the shrooms said. I never told you what the fuck I wanted. I like old school cars and big booty women. That's what I like, bro. Excuse my language for any women that's in here. And obviously, before your first fight, last fight against Wonder Boy, you guys kind of had this gentleman's agreement about no takedowns, and uh -huh. that was kind of the Have you talked to Santiago about that? at all? Or do you even care about Man, that? Man, I hit Santiago up about food. The boy didn't hit me back. So obviously the conversation's not there. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like... <laughs> well, we asked him if he would even be interested in that. And he said, I don't care. I'm just going to punch him in the face. So is that like the kind of attitude you like from your opponent? I mean, nah, it's kind of rude, bro. I never said nothing like that about him. I mean, I don't care what he wants either. But uh, if he didn't care, he would have responded to, yeah, let's eat some fucking food. And if the only thing he was worried about punching me in the face, then he would have said, yeah, let's eat some food. He's probably hoping that I'm really going to miss weight because I'm an X-185er. And he's probably hoping that that's the way it goes. And he's probably hoping that that's the way he gets out of the fight. And he's probably hoping that he can get somebody like Chiesa to come in here last second and fight him. Because it's probably like, it's, a, it's probably a more dangerous fight because it's a ground game. But at the same time, it's like not dangerous because you don't have to worry about him cracking you in the face and breaking nothing. Right? So... It's whatever. Hans and Ebio, it sounds good. People say a lot of shit for the mic. Me, I just tell you how the fuck I feel. Well, in case he lost his opponent, did you look at possibly? Yeah, I asked for it. Dana said he liked it. Uh, UFC, I think they said they liked it. Kiesta, seems like Kiesta ain't trying to fight no Kevins no time soon. So between me and Kevin Lee, he said, fuck all them Kevins. <laughs> Why specifically did you want to fight Kiesta? Was it just a bigger name? He looked at me one time kind of funny, so I was like, yeah, I'd like to beat his ass. I've been like that for a minute. Uh, not going to get the opportunity to beat his ass, obviously. He told me I had to win a couple fights before we could fight. I've been losing those fights, so props to Kiesta. <laughs>
<laughs> sure. Uh, and then this this past weekend's news came out that uh, Endeavor bought the majority stake in the WWE, so now yeah. kind of a package deal with the UFC. So what did you make of that news and everything? Bro, that has nothing to do with me whatsoever. Props to Dana White and all those guys out there doing big business moves. But uh, me personally, I'm just worried about uh, punching Santiago and eating a fat-ass plate of food. <laughs> and uh, last one for me. What do you think of the main event between uh, Israel and Alex, the rematch? Uh, same and same, same. I was watching this interview where Pereira was talking about he lost his guy three times as an amateur. Uh, Whitaker realizes that he probably won't be Izzy. And, uh, you know, it's like... Izzy talked all that shit about uh, Marvin Vittori being all delusional about always thinking that he could beat him. Well, he's kind of delusional thinking that he could beat Alex. So it's just kind of like one of those things where they're all just fucking delusional thinking they could beat each other. Me personally, I'm just like, shit, y'all have fun. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I got Alex winning and I got, uh, for the co-main event, I got Burns beating Masvidal. But we all know I don't like Masvidal, so fuck it. <laughs> That's a wrap? I, I got a question for you over here, uh, Kevin. I, I'm curious, uh, Santiago, you know, has most of the time in his USC career been the betting favorite, and you have now positioned yourself to make him the, the biggest underdog he's ever going to be uh, in the UFC. I'm just kind of curious if, if uh, you make anything of the betting odds on this fight. Nah, we're not allowed to bet on each other, so, or bet on the fights. So, at the end of the day, I don't care about betting odds, you know what I mean? But if my bookie's going to cut me a check, I'll do a promo right here. But I haven't heard nothing about a check, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Sounds good. And then I know you said you don't care anything about the betting, but, you know, you've been a, a fan favorite, a people's favorite. And, and for a while on your come up, I think you had that one year you won four or five uh, fights in a row. And the, the odds makers at least gave us a good price on you. I'm kind of curious, you know, what you think about the fan support and uh, everybody always betting on you. Uh, the fans betting, uh, when you guys tell me you're betting, I usually block you. So don't tell me that. Uh, but the fans supporting... I mean, shit, it feels like family at this point in time. Some of them are, like, really, really close. You know what I mean? I've grabbed some relationship with, like, Brawler Bribal, MMA Theory. I'm starting to talk to that guy a little bit more. And just some of those other people that are out there. I've gotten some real cool people off of this game. But uh, some of the fans, you know, they're just, they're exactly, you know, they're just there for the hot moment, whether it's a funny meme or it's uh, a cool story. It's, it's whatever. You know what I mean? I have a good time with them all. And most of the time, I have a fucking great time. Like I said, guys like Brawler came like family, so like to keep that going, you know, keep meeting cool people in this game. That'd be pretty dope. Over here. Thank you. Just curious, the fight's in Miami. It's the first time in 20 years UFC's back in Miami. What do you think about that? And then just trying to get everybody up for this big fight and the big show. Here uh, I really don't know, bro. It's my first time in Miami ever, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's different. It's definitely different. I fought in Jacksonville, I fought in Florida and stuff like that. That was pretty cool, so... It's always nice to be back out this way. The weather's always good. The people are always seem to be pretty cool. You know, uh, the homeless people out here are a little different than the homeless people back at home, but shit, props to them, bro. They got a different type of energy. And to be honest with you, I kind of fucks with it, bro. You know, it's like they're not asking me for anything, but they're cracking a hell of jokes, so I like it. And then you were talking about fan support earlier, and I'm just curious because he's got American Top Team here, a lot of Hispanics here, just... Yeah, bro, I got... I think, uh, you know what? It's like... Pfft. I've been with plenty of Mexican women, bro. I'm part Mexican too. Ayayita! You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Bro, just don't, 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 don't play with me now. Don't play with me. They know how I get down. I love carne asada fries. Don't even play. Don't even play. And after the big fight, last question. Uh, what are you planning to eat then? When I get back to California, I'm going to eat them carne asada fries because it's hard to find them anywhere else. But uh, right after the fight, my family's having a barbecue on Sunday for uh, Easter. So go home, spend some time with the kid, and, uh, you know, just enjoy the fam. And uh, whoop my stepdad's ass in dominoes. You know how I do. Break that back. Mm. Uh, Kevin, I got another question for you. you. You were mentioning that you'd seen some food that you liked. And I'll say, I don't, I'm not worried about a weight cut this week. Where, where were you seeing some good food? Uh, when you go out of the hotel lobby, you make a right, and you just keep walking down the street. A lot of that shit was just smelling good right there on the right side. And I remind you, I could be cutting weight so it could smell better than what it smells. But shit, got my nose flared up, so fuck it. You know what I mean? Appreciate it. Hey, Kevin, right here. What's the relationship like between you and Jamal Hill and Terrence McKinney? Because I saw them at your last fight against Wonderboy Thompson, and they were going crazy for you in the crowd. So is that like, are you guys basically like brothers? Yeah, uh, Terrence just moved out to Texas, so he just got his own place. He just got him a car and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, really proud of Terrence. He's making a lot of good moves right now. Uh, as far as just trying to take his career very serious and, and make the proper adjustments and stuff. Uh, and I'm not saying I'm the proper adjustment, but... Hell, he's, I guess he's, a, he's definitely a proper adjustment for me. He has good wrestling. Uh, and then Jamal, you know, Jamal's the big dog. You know what I mean? He's on top of the road right now, and uh, it's fucking dope as hell having him come around sometimes. So 
you know, we're the blunt bros. Put us together, there's going to be some blunts in the room. Other than that, can't tell you too much. It's all a secret. <laughs> and I know you're a big sneaker guy. What have you, uh, what have you added to the collection recently? Uh, I got those black Travis Scotts, and uh, I ordered, damn, what Jordans are those? With the little green thing on the side. Uh, top. They remind me of the ones I had when I was a kid. I think they were like sixes or some shit like that. So I got those. I, I really haven't been buying that many shoes lately. I've been working on my old schools. My Caprice is almost finished. 86 Caprice almost finished. 96 Impala. I'm getting that done. And uh, the 86 Monte Carlo. I'm just worried about the cars right now, bro. Just trying to get the cars right. Just bought some new rims and shit like that. Redoing the gears in the back. Changing out the engines. It's looking good. Kevin, I don't know if this has been asked yet, but um, what would you make of Leon Edwards' win over Kamaru Usman? I called it, you know what I mean? I was, uh, I was out there with Grunk and stuff when he won the first time, which was pretty cool. Shout out to the Grunk family. And then uh, this time I was at home watching it. And uh, no, I was actually at the gym watching it. I just purchased my own little gym. So we were at the gym watching it and uh, they were, put it this way, Terrence gave me $100 after that fight. So I was happy, you know what I mean? That's all that matters. <laughs> And I, I got to ask you, it seems that um, Colby Covington is next. That's what everything yeah, that's, gets. What are your thoughts on that? The boss said he's next, so he's next. Uh, it, it'd be pretty cool to see a, a Burns or, a, you know, some of these other guys who are probably a little bit more deserving of it get it. But, uh, you know, shit, Colby's getting it. Colby's getting it. I'm pretty sure it makes good numbers for uh, pay-per-view and shit like that. And, you know, honestly, I would love to see Leon win because nobody really likes Kobe, but Kobe probably gets the fucking job done, unfortunately. Just a different type of fighter, even though he has the same, like, you know, pressure and the strike is not as good. But I just think that he's going to wrestle harder than Usman did and, you know, probably get the job done, unfortunately. Yeah. That being said, fuck Kobe Covington. Everybody agrees. So, yeah. You don't like him? Don't like what? Kobe. Bro, you don't like Kobe. Why would I like Kobe? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, bro. Anybody in here really, like, actually like Kobe? Like, like the character that Kobe plays? No. All right. Kobe's probably a good guy, but the character that he plays is pretty dumb, so makes it kind of awkward, you know? Have you ever met him at an event or anything? I, I talked to him once on the phone, and then that one time, Chamayev made that joke about me being the, the, the help and stuff. He was actually at the event, and I met him there. So uh, we've been on the same card a couple times, but... Never really met the guy. Every time I see the guy, he has like five security guards around him, and then he's quiet as fuck, and then he gets in front of the camera, and he goes ape shit. So props to Kobe. He knows how to make his money. Props to him. He knows how to get title fights, too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. Appreciate you.